What is up, everybody? This is Ryback Stun. We are here today with Marvel Heroes. We are going to showcase off the newest hero in Marvel Heroes, of course, because it's a game about heroes, called Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange is a very popular member of the Marvel Universe, uh, originally a member of the Defenders. Before that, he was just a solo hero. Also now currently a member of the Avengers, and he's been, you know, roaming around, doing different things, space flights, astral flights, fighting demons, fighting aliens, all that kind of shit. And uh, Doctor Strange is the newest hero for this specific game. So uh, we'll look at the power trees really quick. We've got three trees here. We've got the Sorcerer Supreme tree, we've got the Mystic Arts tree, and we have the Astral tree. Now, one of the things that's different about Doctor Strange than any other character is that, not different from any other character, but he has a resource bar here called Mysticism. And what's different is, is that Doctor Strange is actually built around cooldowns. And that he has these abilities called incantations. You can see in the little things there. Incantation, 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 incantation. Uh, all of his incantations have cooldowns. They have varying degrees of cooldowns, but they all have cooldowns, period. When you hit an incantation, you get a dot of mysticism. And that mysticism will give you mystical energy. And once you hit the maximum mystical energy... You, your next incantation will cost no spirit and reduces the cooldowns of all your incantations, including the incantation you just cast, by 15 seconds. So everything but, I believe, two incantations will come off a of cooldown immediately. And you could use this as, as kind of like a power buff DPS burst section, and that's how that works. So we've got a bunch of different abilities. I'm going to show you every one of them as it's here, including the ultimates. And I put one point in every ability. I've got three bars ready to go showcase these things. We're just going to quickly tell you what each of these do. We've got the Bolts of Balthok, which is just a, a blast of beam straight ahead. It does pierce through. It, it hits everybody in, in the line. Uh, it does medium-sized damage. We've got Fangs of Ferala, which is... Uh, a monstrous entity called for all that attacks and chomps on people. It does 25% base damage per incantation on cooldown. It can do high damage, but it does not scale very well because of this 25% per incantation on cooldown ability. You got the Crimson Bands of Sidorak, which will uh, immobilize people and do damage, and it's got a 3 second cooldown. We've got the Seven Sons of Cinnabus, which is a cone type ability that's not tagged as area currently, that gives you crit rating and crit damage for that power only. We've got Flames of the Fault Line, which is, uh, uh, it, it's a dot that drops on the ground and anybody that's in it takes damage per second. Uh, area duration is short, cooldown is actually shorter, which is cool. Uh, Demons of Denek, it basically targets one dude and it does mental damage on that person twice a second for five seconds. Cooldown is five seconds, so it's a decent ability. We've got Icy Tendrils of Ekathon, or Ekthalon. Uh, it creates a dimension that tendrils come up and attack once, slows everybody for six seconds, and it has a cool se is six second cooldown. Your second basic on Doctor Strange is Daggers of Davaroth, and that it creates a little power aura in front of you and then shoots daggers in different directions, and it does five of them, and it does damage per shot. And then your last ability in Sorcerer Supreme is called Vapors of Valtor, which is another big AoE area drop section. The area duration is eight seconds, cooldown is 25 seconds and it drops lightning strikes down that hit people in certain areas. So that's all the powers in Sorcerer Supreme. In Mystical Arts, you have Winds of Watoon, which does mental damage in an area, knocks enemies back, and it's your CC break. Has a 15 second cooldown, as all reworked CC breaks do, but this is the one CC break that I will specifically say is actually worth a damn, because it does damage. You have your flight power, which is obvious. You have a passive called Orb of Agamotto, which allows you to see enemies on the mini-map. It gives you 10% maximum spirit, or 10 maximum spirit at level 1, higher at level 20. And uh, upon reaching maximum energy, which is 5 pips of mysticism, your enemies are vulnerable and take 10% extra damage for 6 seconds. You have the Shield of the Seraphim, which envelops you and your allies in a shield of divine light. You regenerate health, you have extra damage negation, and the buff lasts for 4 seconds, cooldown is 18 seconds. You have the Seven Rings of Ragador, which creates a shield around you that deflects a uh, projectiles for three seconds and restores three spirit per deflected projectile you have another passive called ancient training which gives you defense rating dodge rating tenacity and the effects are increased by 50 percent for five seconds when you reach energy when you reach mystical maximum energy which is actually really good because you can reach that pretty quickly if you do an incantation build and then your last ability here is the shield excuse me seal of vishanti which uh, drops a big aoe on the ground and it gives you increased damage rating, defense rating, and the area duration is 8 seconds, cooldown is 12 seconds. 
In the Astral Tree, you have your typical teleport called Mystic Shift. It does do damage to nearby enemies uh, when you enter the portal. It has a stun duration for two seconds, and it has a one second cooldown, so you can't just spam this like body slides work right now for characters like Cable and Deadpool. This may change in the future, but all teleports may have a one second cooldown. I know Loki's doesn't, but Scarlet Witch does. Different ways of ha people having different teleport powers. You have your third and final passive, which is called Dream Walking, which gives you extra damage rating, crit rating. It reduces your spirit, uh, reduces the cost of your spirit powers by three percent, and the effects of all that are increased by fifty percent for five seconds when you reach max maximum mystical energy, just like Ancient Training. You have Astral Form, which restores your spirit twelve, uh, restores twelve spirit per second. Its movement speed is twelve percent as you move around in the astral form, uh, astral plane, excuse me. You pass through enemies and objects while moving. You can't be harmed by attacks, but you can't use powers. The buff duration is 3 seconds, and it's got a 20 second cooldown. One of the most interesting mechanics I think about Doctor Strange here is this astral projection, and that it creates an astral projection of yourself next to you, and it uses the same powers you do. Bolts of Balthok, Daggers of Davaroth, and Fangs of Farala, which, if you do it right, the Fangs of Farala can hit for a lot of extra damage. It has an ongoing spirit cost. It's supposed to be two spirit per second, but I have a cool uh, thing that drops my spirit down by 5%. And uh, obviously other things like this will reduce it even further. But it just constantly takes It's a toggle, so it just goes and goes and goes. Uh, before we hit these next two powers, let's show you the additional extra this. You can summon an Astral Legion up to five total, including your first one. It says maximum four here, but it's additional projections specifically. And all your projections at, at deal an additional 5% damage per image, so up to 25% damage for all five of them. And the ongoing spirit is 2 per second for each additional spirit, so you could be draining yourself for 10 spirit a second as long as your astral lesion is up. You have the images of Icon, which is another summon here. It gives you 150% health and defense of Doctor Strange's health for your new illusions. They taunt, they have a 5 second duration with a 9 second cooldown. And then last but not least, we have the All-Seeing Eye here, which is your signature power. It does mental damage, which is pretty good per shot. It has a 15-second summon duration, and it has a 1-minute cooldown, and it has a plus 1% base damage per point in Essence of Zom, which is your ultimate. And your ultimate here uh, gives you a bunch of extra power. You get damage rating, defense, you do mental damage per second, its duration is 30 seconds, and its cooldown is 10 minutes, and you're immune to crowd control. So now that we've gone through all the technical aspects of these abilities at level 1, let's show you what they actually do. So we have, over here we have the level 1 targets with no defense. That was the Bolt of Balthok. It just shoots in a line and shoots a bunch of people. If you'll notice, with this shot right here, I can hit all three of these target dummies. And with that one I can hit those two. With that one I can hit that one, two, one, two, and three. So that's your first basic attack which is actually pretty good. I think it's quite amazing. And if you do it right, you can hit a bunch of people in a line. And it does decent damage, about 2,000 per shot. This is with no gear on right now. You'll see I have zero gear on. We'll show you what stuff looks like here in a minute with uniques and stuff. Um, but just, that's it shoots in a straight line. It hits everybody that's in that line, and there you go. Here is your teleport. You'll notice I did a little bit of damage to that guy. Boom. 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 And there's that. Now, the Crimson Bands of Sidorak is your immobilization thing. It does do damage twice per second for three seconds, I believe. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. So there's your damage. Basically, six ticks of two thousand damage. And there is how that works. Sorry, just turning the chat off really quick. And that's what's causing, if you'll notice, as I use the Crimson Bands of Sidorak, it's popping up little orbs around me, and it's giving me the little things in this bar. So next, we have the Seven Sons of Cinnabus, which is a cone attack. It's not tagged this area. I don't know if that's intentional or not, but we'll find out once it hits live. And it does a decent amount of damage in a cone in front of you. And it is an incantation, so it will give you points in this. And you'll notice that all of my stuff just activated for five seconds. And my next incantation will cost no spirit and will reduce all the cooldowns of my incantations by... 15 seconds. So, boom. Notice my spirit didn't go away at all. So that's the Seven Sons of Cinnabus. We have the Flames of the Fault Line, which just drops a really cool looking AoE on the ground that if people stand in it, they take damage. And you'll notice it lasts a pretty long time. It actually lasts longer than the cooldown is. So if I go bam, wait a couple seconds, 
bam, just as it comes up, it goes down on the other one. So if you can reduce, if you can increase your duration on your characters, you can actually have it going on for a pretty long period of time. Next, we have the Demons of Denik, which for five seconds, it has this little demon guy just go blop, 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 and he just slices and dices and spices and stuff. It's uh, tagged as a ranged attack, so it'll do only ranged damage, but it also do mental damage. Everything Doctor Strange does is mental damage. Then we have the Icy Tendrils of Ichthon, which is that. Pretty cool little ability, actually. Um, it does, it's a, just a pops up, attacks, slows movement speed, and attack speed for 20% uh, 20 for 6 seconds. So as long as it's on cooldown, you get that extra stuff. And I'm going to do one more of these. Boom. Alright. So, last for this section, we have the Fangs of Varala, which does a little attack thing here. It does a decent amount of damage. But it does do more based upon how many thing how many incantations you have on cooldown. So we're gonna go F D S. Boom. Notice how it did eleven thousand damage there. Seven thousand damage uh eleven thousand crit, seven thousand damage. It does do twenty five percent more damage for each incantation on cooldown. So if you can quickly get a bunch of incantations on cooldown, then you can drop the fangs for all and it does a lot more damage. Which, if you're going to go with an incantation build, that's definitely the way you want to go. Now, the next basic, as I said earlier, is Daggers of Datheroth. D Did I say that right? Datheroth, yeah. So you just shoot it, it's a little thing, it shoots five bullets, and they swim around. Um, no, you cannot immediately target something, it will go to them. It goes to the nearest targets. So, it's a good power if you need to clear out a couple things, or there's only one target on the screen. Because it does do, you know, a decent amount of damage per shot. And it's five shots, so technically it does do more than the first basic. But if you need direct and fire, go with the Bolts of Battle Thought. Next, we have the Vapors of Valtor, which is a 25-second cooldown incantation. So you drop it, boom, and here's a bunch of damage that's coming out. Next, we have Winds of Watum, which things get knocked back. You can't see it because it's resisted, but there's that. And now that I have two abilities on cooldown, boom, we're doing 5,000 damage, 7,000 damage, 5,000 damage so on and so forth. Your Vapors of Valtor and your incantations on your support tree are basically going to have the longer cooldowns, and that's how you're going to be able to get the access to that type of stuff. Let's hit this really quick so you can see it one more time. Look at the damage that it did. No spirit cost on that. Next, we have the Shield of the Seraphim, which it envelops your allies in a big old AoE. Let me look at how much, look at how far that is. Boom. Right there in front of you. Damage negated by 25% for 4 seconds, and it regenerates 564 health, or 560 health in that aspect. 18 second spirit cost. But, notice that we have three things on cooldown. Boom. 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 And there's that. Now, to test this next one, I need to actually go over to the little energy blaster and show you. Uh, that is not the right power. Here we go. Alright, so. Let's piss him off. Oh wait, he's already pissed off. So notice how he's shooting little energy blobs at me. I'm dodging them because I'm a good skill shot dodger. Not really. Oh, okay. He just KO'd me in one shot. All right, let's try that again. It's got an eight second cooldown. I got to be prepared. Man, that thing one shot at me. Holy crap. It's also because I have no gear on. So we're going to enter in. We're going to show you exactly how this works. So let's wait for it. Fire at him once. Let's fire at him a couple times and get my spirit down so I can show you the spirit regeneration. Boom. Deflect. Deflect. And it restores my spirit. Now I have to dodge. So that's cool. I have my, uh, for some reason it shows that I have the full incantation thing, but I do not right now. And last ability in that support incantation tree, uh, Mystic Arts I believe is what it's called, is the Seal of the Vishanti. And it drops a big old symbol. You can see the symbol on the ground. And with that symbol, your damage rating and defense rating are higher. So you will be doing more damage on stuff with that shield of the Ser uh, seal of the Vishanti on there. And in the last tree, which I'm just doing the mystic thing to show you guys, we have our lovely astral projections. Now, I have little bolts. They'll do that. They'll move around with me. They'll do the fangs. They'll do bolts. They'll do fangs. They'll do bolts. They'll do fangs. I'm going to let my spirit regenerate a little bit. Astral Projection. Astral Projection 2, 3, 4, and 5. 
Now, blast, 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 blast. If you can keep your spirit up, this is actually a pretty good way of adding extra damage because you just add a whole ton of crap. But it does drain your spirit pretty quickly. They will last until your spirit drops. And I believe the way that this works, that on the astral projections themselves, you will only gain damage because they can't be attacked. There's no health aspect to them. And because the duration is as long as your spirit lasts, you won't get summon duration. So things like the Latvian Regalia will help, whereas the Wondergorb Clay, if I remember the things correctly, will not help. We also have the Images of Icon, which is another incantation. But for five seconds, it summons these little Doctor Strange guys, which taunt, and they have a certain amount of health and such. So let's go over and show a little damage thing. We'll go and show the Brawler really quick and see how it is. So we're going to attack this guy. He's not happy about it. But I'm going to summon those guys in there, or not. I'm going to summon those guys in there, and he's not going to do anything. Okay, let's try that somewhere else. Let's go over here. This guy attacks. I know he does. See, he shot me. And now he's going to shoot my, uh, my incantation instead. Summon another one, and see, he's shooting that. So while that happens, I can blast him, and then when those go away, he's going to start blasting me again. So... That is how all of his powers work, with the exception of the ultimate, which we're going to show right now. We're going to actually go to the 60 target dummies again. All right, and we're just going to pop up, and now everybody's taking damage in an aura around me, which is a really cool-looking aura. This thing is actually quite awesome, and they're taking 20,000 damage a second. It's a great ultimate to use when you have a Doombot wave in X defense, or if you just need to get rid of a bunch of enemies around you that you don't think you're going to survive. Or, um, sometimes curse waves can get really difficult with the way that stuff is done. Or, you know, this is actually just a really good X defense tool in general. And it seems to last longer than most ults that I've seen so far. Um, because it does have, it does last for 30 seconds, and that's really good. Now, let's look at uniques really quick. Right now, uh, Doctor Strange has five uniques specific to him, and he can use the Nishanti Cloak of Invisibility as well as any, any hero uniques. So we're going to stick the Uru Warforged Helm on him, because that gives me 200 mental damage. We've got the Book of the Vishanti, which gives me energy and mental defense as well as damage rating. It also gives me damage rating on mental attacks, crit damage rating, 3% chance to go invisible and drop aggro for 3 seconds when I'm attacked. It gives me plus 5 ranks to the, shield of the Seal of Vishanti and plus 6 ranks to all of my Sorcerer Supreme powers. So we'll equip that. The Blue Mage's Body Suit is still slot 2. It gives me defense, health, dodge rating, tenacity, 1 durability, 15% radius for area powers, a 5% chance to create a shield that absorbs damage when attacked, and six plus 6 to all ranks of my Doctor Strange Mystic Art powers. Yes, please find that to me. Next, we have the slot 3, which is the Defender's Black Coat. By the way, for those of you that are familiar with this costume, that is his secondary costume. It's not on the test center at this moment of filming, but it's still a pretty good-looking costume when I saw it on the, uh, on the live stream. It gives you defense, health, 12% chance to take half damage from projectiles, 19% cost reduction on movement powers, a 10.9% power duration. It goes up, uh, obviously, for powers. We have a chance to, percent to ignore damage when attacked, 3% chance. That's actually pretty cool. And when I t deal damage with an incantation, I gain 441 mental damage for 5 seconds, plus 1 to all powers, and then powers to ancient training. Next, we have Disciple of Dormammu Sash which gives you spirit, defense, dodge rating, movement speed, you gain spirit when you hit an enemy, you regenerate when you hit an enemy, and you have a percent chance to summon a mindless one when you defeat an enemy with a maximum of three simultaneous mindless ones. You also have a percent chance when you are attacked to be sheathed in mystical flames, damaging uh, enemies around you when they attack you, Rank, ranks to current powers, and ranks to dreamwalking. And then last is slot 5, the Eye of Agamotto which gives him defense, crit rating, brutal strike rating, brutal strike damage rating, rare item find, special item find, intelligence, and plus to his astral powers and his all-seeing eye. So right now, sitting at one point in every power, I have plus 10 to all my sorcerer, I have plus 9 to all my sorcerer supreme powers. I have plus 9 to all my mystic arts except for ancient training, which is plus 12, and seal of Vishanti, which is plus 14. And then I have plus 8 to all of my astral powers, except uh, All-Seeing Eye, excuse me, plus 7. All-Seeing Eye, which is 13, and then Dreamwalking, which is 12. Now let me hit a retcon really quick, because I don't need all these powers right now. Let's buy a retcon. 
and Q for one, because we're on the test center, things are much cheaper here. Now that we have no points in power, so we have 118 powers, it goes up to 130 because you can get your points from Hood and Kingpin and the Shield Science Station in Chapter 7, I think it is, and then in Chapter 9 you have the Lower Asgard. We don't need all those points right now. The way that I see things being really good right now is that his Bolts of Balthog is his best basic. His Seven Sons of Cinnabis is really good. If you want an AoE drop, you have Flames of Fault Line. I actually think the Crimson Bands of Sidorak are better because it has the immobilization duration. But you can drop the Flames of uh, Fa uh, Faultine, which is pretty good. I keep saying Fault Line. Winds of Watum is an amazing power to use, and so is the Seal of the Vishanti. Those are going to be your big support incantations that you're going to want to use. Uh, Dreamwalking is a good passive. Astral Form is okay. Mystic Shift is really good. Uh, All-Seeing Eye is a great power to have. I did not test that out for you guys. Let me put a point into that so that I can show you what it looks like. I apologize. I'm dumb dumb. So, what happens is, is that it just floats up while you're moving, and it attacks. Is it the nearest target? No, it just attacks. Ah, I see. So now it's going to attack, and it just blasts left and right. Look at how much damage that thing does. It's on a minute cooldown, and it's got a 15-second summon duration. I don't think it's affected by summon things because it's not tagged as a summon. It's just signature range in the area. So, but it does do a lot of damage. So, in my suggestion for a base Doctor Strange build, I would max Bolt of Balthog. I would max se uh, Seven Sons of Cinnabis. I would put at least one point in uh, Orb of Agamotto, one point in Ancient Training, and one point in Dreamwalking. I would max Winds of Latoon. I would max the Seal of the Vishanti. And that leaves you with 35 points. You can put more points into Dreamwalking, Ancient Training, or Orb of Magamona, depending on what you want. I would probably put more points in the Ancient Training, at least burn it up to 5, so that you can have the extra points there. I would max out Dreamwalking, because the Spirit Cost Reduction is going to be very important for Doctor Strange, because even at this point that I have, I only have 254 Spirit, which is kind of difficult to deal with. Um, you already have the Crimson Bands of Sidorak. Having it at rank 10 isn't necessarily a bad thing, but you can pop it up a little bit higher. Pop it up 5 points, put it up to the, the highest you're going to get in that. And that's going to give you the option to roll a bunch of different abilities here. Uh, you've got your Mystic Area, you've got your Crimson Bands, you've got this. So your Crimson Bands is going to be your basic AoE attack. Your Seven Sons is going to be your cone. You've got the, the Wands, Winds of Batum, Wands of Batum. There's a Wand of Batum and there's the Winds of Batum. Uh, there's the Seal of the Vishanti, which is going to give you the extra damage rating and all that other stuff. And then you have your big damage attack. And that, I think, is going to be the best rotation of skills that you're going to be able to do. You can have the Fangs of Ferala, because Fangs of Ferala does not scale very well in any way, shape, or form. Look at what it is at level 1. 4,000 damage, 6,000 damage. At level 10, 6,000 damage, 9,000 damage. You go all the way up to level 18, 7,000 damage, 11,000 damage. If you're going to go with an incantation build, by all means, max out the Fangs of Feral. But an incantation build requires you to weave spells similar to how Cable has to weave all of his dots. That may not be for every individual that wants to play the game. So highly skilled individuals, please, by all means, perfect the incantation build. The way that this build is done here, you have that option to go into that. The Vapors of Valtor was a short period of time. One of the reasons why I don't like this skill specifically is that if you're familiar with League of Legends, Gangplank and Kennen, who are two champions in that game, have ultimate abilities that drop an AoE on the ground that randomly hit people. If you're standing in it, there's no guarantee you're going to take damage, and that's similar to how Vapors of Valtor works right now. With the way things are here in this build, I can shoot level 60 targets for a moderate amount of damage. But then I go... Crimson Bands, and now they're taking a good significant amount of damage. We're going to drop one of these, and that's how that works. We're going to hop one of those, and a Seal of Ashanti, and now all my stuff is off cooldown. What I would suggest doing, specifically in the way that you're going to build, I would have, with your incantations, if you really want... If you really want to focus on the Fangs of Feral, do your big skills first, and then your little skills. So watch. G, F, F, D, S... And then Fangs of Ferala. Does extra damage because you're sitting in your your uh, your Seal of Ashanti. But if you're going to do it the other way around and you want to build up your maximum incantation energy, drop a couple of the quick cooldown things. And then on your fourth and fifth pl uh, plips, you want to drop your uh, Winds of Watum and then your Seal of Ashanti. So that way you can do the extra damage on short cooldown. And then your Seal can immediately go right back up when you need it. Or you can do it the other way around. You can do this the Seal... Wait till the 12 seconds are, 
uh, not 12 seconds, wait till the 8 seconds are up, drop the Winds of a Tomb, and then boom, hit another seal immediately, and you get that extra damage and defense rate. I want to take one more look at his stats really quick. You'll notice he's got uh, 7,098 defense rating, which is his lowest. Uh, that's actually interesting. It's not his lowest. 38% damage from a same level enemy, physical and energy, and then you've got 40% from mental. He's got an 18% chance to dodge. You can always increase that with more dodge rating. His tenacity is 14.6%. Uh, no projectile reflection. No extra attack speed. He doesn't really need it. You attack decently enough. And that's all that good stuff. Bam, 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 bam. Critical rating is 733. Obviously, I don't have any. I don't have a relic. I don't have a legendary. I don't have a ring. I don't have a, a rune word on my Uru. I don't have any artifacts or a metal slot. I can throw the test center metal on there, but that's kind of ridiculous since it doesn't have realistic stats that are there. Crit rating is 18%. 161% for crit damage. 5.1% for brute strike. 319% for brutal strike. Uh, damage rating. Damage rating is 28.6% on regular damage. On mental damage, it's 41.8%, which is everything that you have. All mental damage. No range damage bonus. Power duration bonus is 10%, so your powers last 10% longer, which is really nice. That means that uh, the all-seeing eye actually isn't affected by that. That's interesting. Is your ultimate affected by it? No, I guess not. Interesting. Maybe those have specific internal things that don't allow it. You have your spirit cost at 17%, so you'll notice that uh, the fangs are only 7.8. 7 the all-seeing eye doesn't have, a, doesn't have a spirit cost. The seal of Vashanti is 19.4. 31 spirit cost for the winds of the tomb. I want to look at something really quick. It would be 1.7 spirit per second for the astral projection. Still two spirit for that. Oh, that's the right button. Bonus XP, I have a, not that much synergy right now. The rest of this stuff doesn't really matter all that much. So, but here are the uniques as they look at, so you can find, look, know what you're looking for when Doctor Strange comes out. Uh, for those of you who've never seen one, that's a Zod rune. This is the first time I've ever seen a Zod rune. It's used for the last uh, rune word. But that is Doctor Strange. Hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did uh, playing the character. Hope you guys learned a lot more about how it works. Let's go ahead and drop a Seal of Ashanti. And then a Winds of Watum and another Seal of Ashanti. You could double up and have double of that thing. That's actually pretty damn cool if you know how to build it right. So, remember to like and comment on the video. Subscribe to the channel. I apologize about that really loud clap. Um, follow me on Twitch, Tumblr, and Twitter at RybackStun. More videos as they come along. More Marvel Heroes, more Hearthstone, more Star Trek. All that other lovely stuff. Hope you guys enjoy Doctor Strange when he hits the live servers when he does. Test center footage is always subject to change. Things can happen differently. Remember that. That is something that I really need to stress. Stuff changes. Uh, and with that, this is Ryback Stun, signing out.